In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to remove gradients in your astrophotography images. So we're starting here with my stacked TIFF file from Deep Sky Stacker that uh, includes about three hours worth of data on the Leo triplet. So the first step I'm going to take here is to slightly crop my image. And then I'm going to make a levels adjustment. And we can start to see some of the impurities in the image, including uh, some stacking artifacts as well as the gradients. Now I should state that I did use flats, um, so the gradients could have been much, much worse if I hadn't done that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, crop the image uh, quite a bit just to uh, get around the stacking artifacts around the edges here. And to me, it looks like, for argument's sake, we'll go right about there. It's unfortunate that I have to crop so much, but uh, obviously there were some differences in my framing. Um, there, this is two nights worth of imaging. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a 16-bit file to open up some more editing options including adjusting the levels once more and more importantly a curve stretch so the reason we want to keep this top end down here is to uh, not lose the core of these galaxies here that will that would blow them out and now you can start to see some of the um, the vignetting in my image here and the uh, the gradient. So I like um, the plugin Gradient Exterminator um, by RC Astro. I use that a lot. Uh, but another way uh, I like to use if uh, Gradient Exterminator isn't working well or I just want to try a different method, <clears throat> this, this way works really well and it's, it's free. You can do it just with Photoshop without the Gradient, gradient Exterminator plugin. And uh, I'll show you how that works. So let's say we have the image at this stage and I want to adjust the gradients now. Where you decide to adjust the gradients in your processing flow is up to you. I usually do it more towards the early side of the processing after that initial curve stretch. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, copy this layer and paste a duplicate layer. So I've got another layer of the same, a copy of the image, and I'm going to name this layer Gradients. Next, I'm going to copy this layer again and create a new image and paste it in. So once, when uh, you've copied an image on your clipboard with using Control C, it went, and then you go to New Image, uh, pasting it will, by default, paste the exact size of your uh, the copied layer on your clipboard. So I'm just going to merge this down so it's a single layer here. Uh, okay, and now so on this this file here, we're going to do something that feels a little bit strange, and it's we're going to remove the galaxies from the image just to get a just to create a synthetic flat of the background sky on this image. So. I just want to copy an area, or I'm using right now the uh, healing brush tool. There's a few of them I'm using, not the spot healing, but the healing brush tool. And then uh, I've got a brush of 428 here with a feathered edge. Yeah, the hardness, I'm going to turn it right down. And then holding down the Alt key, I'm going to select an area of the sky that I wish to use. And now I'm going to paste over the hamburger galaxy here just to get that background sky. And then the, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose an area of sky close to, uh, I'm not sure if this is M65 or 66, it's one of them. And then uh, I'm going to do the same thing and remove these galaxies, which uh, doesn't seem right. You spend all this time capturing these galaxies only to erase them. Uh, but the main thing is we want, we want to capture the background sky here, the gradients that are in it so we can uh, kind of cancel it out from uh, our original version. I'm actually going to remove this bright star as well. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. And now we're going to go to filter, noise, dust and scratches. Now you want to pay attention to the patterns here on, on the uh, blurred out image. And you want to get basically a smooth, this, if you've seen what flat frames look like when you take them with your camera, they look similar to this. So we're getting all the discrepancies and the, uh, the gradients in, uh, in our image. I could have done a better job at removing those galaxies, but uh, for argument's sake, we'll just use this one. So I'm using a radius of uh, 80 and a threshold of zero. So I've got this blurred out synthetic flat frame. And now we're gonna subtract this from the original image. So I've got the, just the two images open here. Now I'm on my gradients layer and I'm gonna go to image, apply image, and from the source in the drop down here, I'm going to choose Untitled 1, which is the other, other frame here, my, my synthetic flat. And I'm going to make sure the blend mode, by default, it would just be on normal, but you want subtract. So you can see me previewing it on and off here, what it's doing. It's really flattening out the frame. So I you can control the offset here, and I usually like to do somewhere between 30 and 50. I think I'm going to stick with 35 and then I'm going to leave the opacity at 100% here and I can control that on the layer itself. I'm going to hit OK. So again, here's the difference between the original, the original here and then with our flattened, uh, with our synthetic flat applied. So now we can control the uh, the amount that we want to do to apply this to. So I've got 70% here. And as you can see, it made a big difference. So now when I've got this, I've just created a new layer um, on top here. And now this is, this is the layer I'll be making uh, more adjustments to. And it's a lot easier to make adjustments once you've made that uh, gradient correction. And as you can see, if you want to look around, <clears throat> the gradient um, sub subtraction didn't take away from our DSOs at all. You're, you can see they're unchanged because um, we erased them from the uh, synthetic flat. So it's just using, it's just um, correcting that background sky. So that's how to make a uh, synthetic flat using Photoshop. And uh, it's a quick and easy way to um, adjust your gradient issues. Now this works with, uh, it works really well for smaller objects like this that I can easily just clone out. Uh, if you're doing something like a large nebula and it takes up the entire frame, uh, it's pretty much impossible to use this method. But uh, that being said, adjusting gradients in general are, are tough on, uh, on large nebulae like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this and you, uh, you use this on your astrophotography images and uh, I think it makes a big difference. So thanks for watching.